Welcome to the AMBCC's MCAT kickoff to the summer series, to the summer video workshop series. Today we are going to start off with Google Hangouts for Professionals. My name is Africa Allah and joining me today is Hollywood Kid. Hollywood is one of the members of DI Radio Cast, Distinctive Impression Multimedia Group, and he is my right hand man over at Distinctive Impression. He's a new media specialist. I am a I am a new media professional, and new media means traditional media housed on a digital platform. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get to know a little bit about um, Google and the Google ecosystem, specifically Google Hangouts. A lot of people are trying to navigate through the Google ecosystem or the Google sphere um, and have a lot of questions. But Google in itself has changed over the past few years. Tell us a little bit about your experience, Hollywood, and again, introduce yourself to the general population. Uh, again, my name is Hollywood Kidd, Digital Media Specialist for Distinctive Impression. Um, my experience with Google, uh, that's, I don't know, long story, short story. <laughs> um, it starts with Gmail kind of nowadays, but um, <laughs> um, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty much um, yeah, a big Google fan at this point. I love how um, the network is integrated with a lot of the um, resources that we use um, and some of the cutting edge, I guess, nuances that they had that allow people who traditionally might not have a voice or a platform or avenue to um, showcase their product uh, or their brand, um, it, it kind of levels the playing field a lot in a lot of cases. Okay, well, you know, there We've 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 added some content inside the Google invite. So if you'd like to find out, you know, first steps to getting involved in the Google Hangout, the first thing I would suggest is to look at those videos. Um, those are like starter videos. We're really talking to the intermediate people, the people that have already established a Google Plus account, have already begun using Google Google Plus for various things and now want to take the Google Hangout or the Google Experience, the Google Plus Experience to another level with their business. So if you want to just find out how to participate, how to be a part of the Google Sphere, then you can definitely check out that. Um, one of the first things that we want to talk about are the different ways that you can use Google Hangouts for your business. In Hollywood, uh, there's an article. There's an article <laughs> that came up. Um, tell us about ways that people are using Google Hangout to kind of push their business further, or reduce reduce time and increase productivity. Um, well. One of the, I guess, um, key ways to use Google um, is to communicate with your team, your network, um, team meetings. Um, we're big on that, and I actually love that our network is on, up on technology because if we need to have a meeting and really don't want to go anywhere, <laughs> um, or yeah, your time you might be pressed for time, or your resources might be a factor if you have to travel. Um, Google Hangouts is a great way to um, have some face-to-face -face communication with your team. Um, so Yeah, because yeah, one of the things that we did, um, we've done or we do, uh, the DI RadioCast network particularly is a digital platform. Um, over the course of the past eight years, we really haven't had people that lived in the same city. So we've depended on new media for a long time to be our communication, our communication hub. Um, starting off with Skype in the early 2000s when we initially started prior to Google having this interface. 
uh, we use the Skype platform. Um, the difference between Skype or Uvo or even Facebook is that Google Plus Hangouts or the Google Hangouts are attached to your Google Drives. So you can actually host the meeting while working on a project and simultaneously as you are working on the project you can see what everyone else is doing. You can correct and update content at the same time. Um, it also interfaces with your calendars. So if I schedule a Google Plus meet a Google Hangout meeting, it automatically syncs into your calendar and invites you once you accept it. Um, and then it reminds you. And it sends you a link and says, click on this to join the meeting. So before I'd have to send, I'd have to create a Skype meeting and then I'd have to send you, I'd have to call you or send you an email, a separate email. Once I do this inside the Google, inside the Google Hangouts, then it automatically happens. All of that stuff is synced. So what Google has done, they have kind of combined all of the things that we already do. Think about it before they had any meeting and um, meeting on the go, right? And all of these things that they did, Google now allows you to do inside their interface using all of their business applications. So that's one of the great things about using the Google Meetings, um, using Google Hangouts for Meetings. Um, in addition, it doesn't matter where you are, there is no excuse. So if you have a client that says, oh, I'm running late, don't worry. You have a Gmail account, do you have an Android phone? Go ahead and talk to me on your telephone and we can have a face-to-face -face meeting. Really, I truly enjoy this process because it reduces, my, it reduces my overhead expense because now I don't have to drive back and forth or catch cabs anywhere. I can work from the comfort of my home or my office. And it also increases productivity and gives you more time because you're no longer having to you're no longer having to put that additional two hours of travel time into your schedule. You now have those two hours to go on to the next project. So you've just freed up two hours of travel time to do something productive for your company. So that's one of the great that's one of the great things about actually using the Google Hangouts tool for your business meetings. Um, what else are there? Um, beyond meetings, um, now they they uh, there's several ways that um, Google has allowed you to monetize literally platform. Mm -hmm. um, so you can hold um, <coughs> seminars, webinars if will, um, do consulting via Google Hangouts and yeah you can charge in um, so you know what we're doing here is um, consulting. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know so um, definitely it's an opportunity to you know um, Monetize what you do, um, and again, save money at the same time. You don't you don't have to go meet with the client every time you need to discuss business. Um, it, it, you don't have to go to their actual location, that sort of thing. Um, also, you know, I do a lot with entertainment as well. So, um, you know, you can conduct press conferences um, via Google Hangouts. Um, so, you know, there's plenty of um, alternative uh, ways, alternative, you know, alternatives, alternatives to use Google Hangouts. Now, a press, a press conference does not necessarily have to be entertainment related. Uh, give, lo and behold, actually, one of the things that I like about this administration, the current administration, which is the Obama administration, is that in 2008 when he came into office he was very big on the social media front he was he had he has revolutionized the way the way politicians engage and interact with their constituents every week there is a google town hall 
using Google Hangouts, which they record. So they use Google Hangouts on air, which they record, and you can replay and watch. Also, he also hosts, um, he also comes on himself and talks to the general population. So there is a level of transparency. Um, companies actually recently, there were several companies, um, of course they use other services like Cisco and other systems, but Microsoft when they did their broadcast, they broadcasted their latest announcement about their acquisition. Not Microsoft, AT and T. I'm sorry. When they broadcasted, they broadcasted their their announcement with their acquisition. That too can be something that you can do via the Google Hangout platform. Again, um, you can do it via the Google Hangouts on air, which allows you to not only broadcast but capture, record, and replay. You can uh, record live, so people can interact and engage with you live. And upon completion, you can have it so that it goes private. So nobody can access it unless you give them that access code. Uh, also, also webinars. There are several tools that Google is testing out, or they're testing out, to kind of give small businesses an opportunity to monetize, as Paula was said, their services. Um, over the past, I, I would say, what, the past nine months, we've been actively doing our on live series. That's DR Radio Cats. We've been actively doing our on live series where we speak to tech professionals. We have also taken that project and created, created a platform within the chamber that allows us to showcase and highlight professionals and entrepreneurs that are part of the Atlanta Metropolitan Black Chamber of Commerce, talk about their specific industries and their experiences in those industries, give advice based on those things. You can now take that ser those services and monetize it through a product that they are now beta testing called Google Help. Google Help takes the Google Hangout process to another level, allowing you to charge a minimum of a dollar to a maximum of whatever it is that you think that your product is worth. Now, of course, we have to be realistic in our billing, but those are opportunities that are available. And you also said one other thing, I think, oh, of course, and on consultation, which is another thing that you can do, you can also monetize. So education, education, business, um, announcements, and professional meetings and arrangements. And all of these have different levels that are engaged in the Google, in the Google Plus or in the Google Hangout system. Now, how do we get started? I would, I would, I would oh, mention okay. one other thing. No, um, and yeah, this kind of just came to mind. Um, but now, um, the way they're allowing you to create um, Campaigns for donations. Oh yes, and, and that is actually Google something that they're definitely um, coming up with. Um, they're testing out now. It hasn't gone live, so some people have been invited to do. You know, Google likes to give you this, make you feel like you're exclusive, right? And so they are beta testing it with some content creators, and they are using that platform. Continue on. Yeah, so you could certainly use it to hold. Donation campaign drives, that sort of thing. So we have a webathon now. Remember telethons? Remember the Jerry Lewis? I mean, the Jerry Lewis, Jerry's kids, Jerry's kids telethon. So now you can host a telethon for your organization. Um, it it turns crowdfunding into an engaging and interactive thing, and people love to be a part of things. I I always I'm a fond believer of making your audience, your target audience a part of the experience. Because when you do that, it, they hold more, they have a vested interest. It, it holds more through new media technology and products like Google Plus, you have that opportunity. Um, another thing that we want to do now, now that we've talked about the different ways that you as a small business can use Google Plus. Let's talk on um, Google Plus Hangouts. Hangouts on Google Plus. <laughs> um, 
let's talk about how to get started. As I said before, we have uploaded several videos on the AMBCC event page. So if you're not on the AMBCC event, event page and you're, you're watching from DI Radio Cast and or ambcc.org, you can always click on that RSVP code or um, click on the links that reference those particular topics. What we, the things that you need when having a Google Hangout, right? Getting started, the tools. You're going to need solid internet connection. Why? Because it doesn't matter how good your camera is, if your internet connection is slow, the network itself is going to adjust based on the bandwidth. So you can have a four, it doesn't even make sense to have a 4K camera if your, your Wi-Fi or your internet is operating at standard or PAL, okay? So you're just going to forever be fuzzy. So that's one thing. And um, we learned the hard way. We did, didn't we? We learned that um, the dream project, we, we did the GI Mobile Report, and that's where we go out and we speak. We, we go to an event, and then we do a wrap-up review of that event. The problem is, at the event, the Wi-Fi that we carry, our personal Wi-Fi that we carry, was blocked out, so they didn't allow any outside Wi-Fi. You had to use the hotel's Wi-Fi. You had to pay the 19.99 to use the stronger, the free signal. Which, which now I understand the difference between the free signal and the 19.99 signal. Okay, um, <laughs> and as a result, our while our broadcast, our broadcast audio was clear, our video looked like we had a camera from 1988. Okay? So you definitely want to have solid internet connection. And um, you want to be broadcasting at standard or HD. Pretty much everybody wants HD, but you have to understand that you have to know what your broad, what your capabilities are based on your Wi-Fi connection. Second, you have to have the Google Plus, the Google Hangout software downloaded to your system. And can you pull up the Google Plus, the Google Hangouts? Okay. So you have to have that software connected to your system. If you are already on Google, as a, you have a Gmail account, you automatically have a Google Plus account. You need to make sure that you have activated your Google Plus account and that you have downloaded the Google Hangouts software. You can go to google.com backslash plus backslash learn more backslash <laughs> Come on, guys. Or you can just Google Hangouts, okay? <laughs> That's way too much. <laughs> yes, Google, Google Hangouts. So Google, Google Hangouts. So Google, Google Hangouts. Now tell us a little bit about Google Hangouts, um, Hollywood. Since you brought up the page, let's talk a little bit about this. Uh, well, tell us their sales pitch on Google Hangouts. Uh, bring your conversation to life with photos, emojis, and even group video calls for free. For free. That's the beautiful part about Google Hangouts. It's free. It's not any meetings. It's not um, on the go. It's not Cisco. It is a free service that is provided through the Google platform. If Once you have your software downloaded, make sure you have a webcam with a decent mic. Um, if you are using if you are using external mics, make sure that your mic quality is really good. Uh, make sure that you test it. Also, if you are going to be broadcasting and you're going to be broadcasting other people, make sure that you are using headphones so that you can cancel out the feedback from the cross conversation because whatever is broadcasted across the speakers everybody else will be hearing because they'll pick up on your microphone. 
Uh, again, if you're using external microphones with noise cancellation, then that may not be a problem. But I always encourage people to use headphones when when doing a group Google Hangout chat. Um, there are two types of Google Hangouts, and we briefly went over it, but the two types are the Google Hangouts and the Google Hangouts on Air. Tell us the difference between Google Hangouts and Google Hangouts on Air, Hollywood. Well, the Hangouts on Air, I guess, kind of speaks for itself. I mean, it's live. Um, what we're doing, interactive, uh, others can join the on-air um, hangout, um, submit questions, that sort of thing, um, versus the regular? The, the, the regular hangout is just a hangout. It's not recorded, and you can't watch, you can't watch the content back. Right, yeah, I'm sorry. That, that is, I guess that's the key. I kind of presume that the key to that is, yeah, it, it records live for you while you're doing a live on your hang on. Then you have it for later playback, monetization, once again, um, and other uses. If somebody happens to not make it, you know, shame on them, you can play it back. Um, they can watch it later. So. Yes, and we're actually adding the call to our system so people can join via a conference call. <clears throat> and they can join via a conference call here on the network. So what we're going to do is we're going to put up we're going to put up the telephone number for you guys to call in and be a part of today's session. One great thing I would also mention um, about Hangouts, um, you know, Jared Cast, our, our network is big on mobile technology, mobile devices, so certainly um, you don't always have to be sitting in front of the computer. Um, nowadays, it's um, across all phone platforms, so if you're on uh, Android or you're on um, iOS and iPhones, um, Apple, then you can uh, certainly join um, the Hangouts via your, your uh, mobile device, be it a phone or a tablet, whatever have you. Yes, and again, if you go to, if you Google Google Hangouts, you can get the software or you can go to the App Store, look for Hangouts, and download that application. If you are on an, on an Android phone, it is already embedded into your interface, so you just need to, you just need to log in to your Google account and sync all of your content and information. Um, the other thing that you're going to need, well, you already said it pretty much, a laptop, a desktop, or mobile device. Now, after you have these things, how do you set up a Google? How do you set up a Google event? There are several ways to set up a Google. There are several ways to set up a Google event. First, you need to identify what it is that you want to do with this particular product. How do you want to use Google? How do you want to use Google? Hangouts to further your business. If you are setting up a meeting, like we said before, you can send and you can send a calendar invite and click video call. Right? That's what it says. It says video call. You can set up a calendar invite in Google Cal and click on video call. When you put in your selection, you say what type of meeting it is. In the location place, you can put the location, and underneath you will see where it says, is this going to be a video call? Click on video call, and what that will do is automatically send everybody that is going to be a part of that meeting that invite with that login information. And you set up your reminders. There is an automatic 10-minute reminder prior to the event that sends out a message to everyone via their inbox that gives them the URL link to that particular meeting. Now keep in mind Google video, the Google video call is an, a hangout, not a hangout on air. So it is private and it is not recorded. If you would like to record that then you would need to use a different software, another software like a screen capture software to record that in that particular session. 
or you can set up a or you can set up a live event, a private live event on your Google, I'm sorry, on your YouTube, everything is Google, on your YouTube page, which is again a part of Google. The PayPal about seven years ago. Did you know the makers of PayPal actually created YouTube? Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So and once again, if you have the Gmail, you have a YouTube. May not know it yet. Yes. You just would have to go and you have activate to it. activate it. And once you activate your G Plus, you automatically have your YouTube. And people are like, I have a YouTube, but I don't know where it is. My dude, just pay attention. <laughs> can, can, can we pause momentarily so I can mention something just yeah. about that? Um, because you know, a big part of what we do is branding, um, and making sure your branding is consistent. Um, across platforms as much as possible is, um, you know, very important. So um, be kind of aware when you're setting up your 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 Gmail um, or your Google Plus that um, since it crosses platforms, yes, whatever you use is going to be the same thing everywhere. Uh, everywhere. So if you want it to be a particular thing, you're going to have to name it that. Can't kind of go and change it after the fact. It was kind of you used to be able to do it. it I mean, it has its advantages and has its disadvantages. If you want it to be different, that kind of like, oh well. Um, but really, um, they have actually enabled aliases. But I would tell you to go ahead and do it right the first time. And sometimes you have to set up your Gmail account um, kind of like different that. because other people may have that name or something similar. So in those instances, yes. However, the name, you know, you can have a Gmail account, but the name that you name that Gmail account is the name that is going to follow you across platforms. So you want to make sure that you're very aware of what you're doing and make sure that whatever you use on Google Plus, use it on Facebook, Twitter, um, and even LinkedIn business pages. Uh, a lot of people don't understand the necessity for that. And also, there are there is an opportunity on Google to use it for the Google Plus platforms to use the Google Plus business pages. And that, again, is something that we'll talk about in another two weeks when we come back with more information on Google for professionals. But right now, we're talking about Hangouts. So I want to get back into the Hangouts. Um, if you are setting up a meeting and you want to make it private but you want to record it, there are options for that. You can actually set up an event, make it private. Um, you can broadcast it, make it private, or you can broadcast it and you can make it private thereafter. I don't recall if you have the ability to make it private during the streaming because the whole concept of on air is to be on air. That just means that you have to reduce the amount of marketing you do because, again, just because you create it doesn't mean everyone is going to come. Oh, we have a call. Welcome. Hello. Yes, and your name is? Michael Hill. Hi, Mr. Hill. Welcome to the call. Do you have a question for us? Yes, I wanted to hear more about how do I add PowerPoints to my Hangout. That was my question. How do you add PowerPoints to your Hangout? All right, that is an excellent question. And one of the things that we have inside Google Plus or inside the Google Hangouts platform, again, there are various applications, business applications that you can add inside your Hangout to engage. The same way when you're hosting a meeting, you can use the Google Docs. Upload your PowerPoint to Google Docs, then do a screen share and share that Google Doc with everyone. So again, inside there, inside the Google Hangouts, on the left-hand side, you're going to see tools. The tools will have your chat, your screen share, your camera, your tools box, and it also has 
the opportunity for you to add other other applications. Um, you can actually add SlideShare into your application, into your session. Uh, a lot of people use SlideShare, so if you have a SlideShare account, you can actually do a SlideShare inside your Google Hangout. In addition to that, um, like I said before, you can use your Google Docs, upload your presentation to your Google Docs, and present it from your Google Docs. Mr. Hill, have we answered your question? Yes, I would like to see that in future presentations. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you for joining us. All right, there we go. So that is and that is a great display of how you can actually engage your audience. People can call. Remember the radio shows. Your people is calling. Hey, I'm calling in from. I think we need to have a screener though, because it just popped up. <laughs> <Ow. laughs> but people can call in and actually be a part of your broadcast. You can answer questions right there on the spot, and that is a wonderful display of how you can how the power of Google is accessible through our networks, through the new Google Plus, hang, um, Google Plus and Google Hangouts. Another thing that, I guess another thing that we want to talk about, um, we talked about how you can use this, how the product, the, the product, the other thing is the Hangouts on Air. Hangouts on Air, I think that it's the best thing that ever happened. When creating a Hangout on Air, through either your personal page or your professional page, you can create an event. Create an event because, again, just because you build it doesn't mean that they will come. You need to create an event so people know about it. Invite your circles. And based on, again, this is for people that are intermediate, that have already gone through the Google process and understand the Google ecosystem. If you have already participated in the Google Plus ecosystem and you kind of created your little circles and you know that this set of people, they want to hear this type of content or this set of people wants to hear this type of content. If you've already segmented your audience, you can now invite specific circles to your event. Now, if you feel that the information that you're broadcasting is valuable to the general public, and a lot of people feel that, you know, every, what I'm saying, everybody wants to hear. Or, I don't really know, you know, so they send it out to everybody. But as time progresses, you'll know who's interested. You'll see the people that constantly say yes. And you put them in a circle and say, these are, these are my influencers or these are my advocates. These are people that always support whatever I do, so I'm going to always invite them. And even if they don't show up, they're going to reshare that content. And that's another thing that you want to make sure that you're doing is um, identifying the people that are sharing your content. Have conversations with them. Thank them. Read their content. Repost and share their content. Build a rapport. I constantly say this, it doesn't matter where we are or what we're doing, that social media is an extension of human communication. It is human communication. Just on a digital platform. The same, the same thing that you would do, or the same courtesies that you would extend to an actual human being, is the same courtesies that you would extend to people on social platforms. The difference is the reach is further. You hit more people in the digital sphere. So you create an event. Once you've created an event, you, you identify the time that you're going to have the event. You give us a little bit of details about what the event is. And then you put in, you add advance. And if you want to have the video screen inside your thing, because it took me a while to figure out how to get the video screen inside the Google event, right? So when you click on the event, once you've created the Google Hangout, um, you can do one of two things. Once you've created the Google Hangout and you go live, you can take the link for that particular event and plug it into the part where it says YouTube URL. And it will then put that particular, it will put that particular video in your event. 
or you can now a couple months ago this didn't have this wasn't even available so that was the, that was the the beginners the beginning um, Google Hangouts before they figured out oh wait okay we want them to put their URL in here but how about we get them to put it in there before so people can anticipate the video so now you can actually go to YouTube and go to upload and click on Hangouts right and what that'll do is it will allow you to it will allow you to book schedule a hangout for it'll allow you to schedule a hangout for a distant time. So if I know that I'm having an event in two weeks, I can actually schedule that hangout now and place it in my event and it will show up when you click on it, it'll show a countdown button to that event. The only problem, the only thing with that is you cannot upload a placement image. So it'll just be a blank screen that looks like, oh, something, nothing's happening here. Fix that, Google. Um, <laughs> um, but once you put that information inside the, once you put that information inside the advanced setting toolbar where it says Google URL, then it'll be populated inside your thing, inside your inside your Google event page. Now, that URL, you can also share it on any social platforms. And once you go live, it's live everywhere. Again, share, share, share. Just because you bill it doesn't mean they will come. You have to market your content. Just because you are the AMBCC, the National Alliance of whatever, does not mean that people are going to come. You have to let them know. All right? So you definitely want to make sure that you're doing that. Um, the other thing, I think we've gone over how to put it in, what to do. Now, figuring out a structure for your content. Make sure that you create an outline. What are some of the things that you do when you're setting up a Google Hangout? I don't, I don't know it becomes I know instinctive you. at a certain point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it does, it does become instinctive, but there are things that you always do. Like, um, again, with me, I, I always make sure that I build, I build a lower third. If you don't know what the lower third is, it is the identifier that tells you what you're watching. It's that thing at the bottom of the screen. Oh, I guess yes, at the bottom, <laughs> at the bottom of the screen right here. That is the lower third. It helps you identify what it is that you're doing, and you can make it. You know, if you have a little bit of, if you have a little bit of um, design skills, you can be as creative as you want. There are also tools on Google. If you Google Google lower thirds, they have like these things that can help you create lower thirds. Um, those are you can use those to make it very distinctive. Uh, what you use to get that is inside the Google Hangouts. There's a thing called Hangout Toolbox. The toolbox allows you to allows you to create lower thirds, allows you to control the audio, allows you to monitor chats inside the event, and it also allows you to set settings. So you want to make sure that you're using your toolbar. If you don't know how to do a lower third, you can do a generic lower third, um, and you can create a generic lower third that will use your profile ID. Let me see. I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up a lower third, a generic lower third, right? Um, let's see, A M B C C B C C M C A T, and I'm gonna turn this on and show you what a lower third looks like, and that's what a lower third looks like, and that's the generic lower third that you can use in the Google Hangout. Now, like I said before, I always create a lower third for my mark for 
for my projects just because I wanted to be distinctive and I also distinctive like the impressions that um, also <laughs> also I'm branding whatever that product is um, when I do stuff for the AMBCC there's always AMBCC lower third with their logo on it when I do stuff for DI radio cast there's always the DI radio cast logo and whatever topic that we whatever topic or program that we are pushing um, when I do stuff with the Sickle Cell Thalassemia Patients Network, again, the same process, the same process. So even though we're work even though it's the Africa Law brand, it's still on behalf of those organizations. So those are things that you want to remember. Um, also, the cover. If you notice when we got on, I threw up a cover. This is the marketing promo that we use for the for the event. This marketing cover this marketing cover is at 300 resolution. It doesn't look like that because of our connection, but um, it's at 300. <laughs> it's at 300 resolution, and it is 640 pixels wide and 360 pic pixels in height. That fills up that screen. So when you're creating your when you're creating your Google Hangout cover, so when people get on, the first thing they see is this cover. That's your intro. You want to make sure that you're building it to those demographics, um, those specifications. I'm sorry, to those specifications. In addition, when you are building your lower third, make sure that it's a PNG because if it's a JPEG. You will have white space, and you're like, why is why is it not working? So make sure that you're using a PNG so that it's transparent. Um, and those just, you know, because I've done it so much and I've been doing it, it just seems like those are instinctive things. But really, a lot of people don't know what to do and how to kind of customize their product. Now there are other things like your lower third doesn't necessarily have to be your lower third. Like if I wanted to create content or 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 throw up a infographic, I can just put that in there and have it show up on the upper left corner or have it show up to the right. You know, the left, yeah, right. I, I got to remember the camera is flipped, right? <laughs> so I can have it show up to this side or have it show up up here. You know. Um, so it just depends. Again, the dimensions are 6, 640 and 360. So you want to make sure that you're building your specifications and you put the content inside that space and make sure that it's a PNG and you can kind of um, customize your content from there. Also, you want to plan out your you want to plan out your process the same way that you would plan out your process for a workshop a meeting, a conference, you want to make sure that you plan out your process. There are other things that you can actually do. Um, there are other things that you can actually do, but for the most part, one of the things that I really encourage is if you do not, if you haven't connected with Uber, which is Uber Conference, which um, Google recently acquired. I would say they recently acquired it. I think they acquired it in February, around February. February, that was around the Fresh Entertainment time. So around February, they acquired Uber. And Uber conferences, a lot, this is going to kill the market for um, freeconferencecall.com because Uber conference is also similar to that, but the difference is it allows you to connect to your Google Hangout. And as you, you guys have witnessed, um, you can actually have people call into your session and be a part of your conversation. You can also host a meeting using using the Uber conference. So there can only be nine people in a video conference, but by adding the Uber telephone number, people can now call in. For the people that do not want to download the software or are not tech savvy, they can actually call in to your conference and converse as opposed to being on screen. So it gives you so many different options. Um, I would suggest that you make sure that you, you get a free Uber conference account, 
which is also connected to your Google account. Um, you can actually pay for a premium subscription that allows you to get an 800 number. I don't know in 2014 why you would need one because, you know, I wouldn't understand that. Um, but if you would like to have an 800 number, if that makes you feel good, then go ahead and get one. Um, no, actually overseas they charge by the minute for over for 800 numbers, so it's easier for an overseas person to actually get on the internet and connect and click on the link. And if you are on the link, if you are online and the URL is available for that Uber call in, they can use their Google Hangout, they can use their Google Voice number and call in by clicking an active link that will bring them into the session again. So there are so many ways to connect using the Google Hangout and actually connect with your audience. And that's one of the major important things that we want to talk about, engaging with your audience and getting them familiar with your brand product or services. Um, Hollywood, do you have any like you know, any tidbits that you want to share? About engaging your Yes, engaging your audience through the whole Google Hangouts platform. Um, we've done several like just basic sessions, like we've done the hip hop town hall, um, we've done the discussions, um, of course the mobile reports. Tell us a little bit about how those things can be kind of, um, have changed the perspective of the, the participants and what they've done with that content thereafter. Um, well, I mean, yeah, it, it's useful in that, yeah, I've I found that sometimes, yeah, I forget some of the things we do and I go back later and, and look at it and review and I'm like, oh, yeah, we did do this. So um, if somebody happened to miss it or somebody asked me something, um, yeah, I have my own point of reference to, to, to go to or to share with them and say, hey, you know, we did this hangout here and it talks about everything, you know, um, that you're asking me about or what have you. Um, um, what else can we say? Um, I don't know, like, one thing I guess <clears throat> I would say, you know, just talking about it and, you know, going through this is great, but, like, in order to kind of really um, understand it, you just kind of have to get on it and use it. Um, so that's one thing I would just say generally, um, you know, don't be afraid to, to, to get on it and use it. The more you use it, the more you become familiar with it. Um, yeah, because there's so many different things that you can do with it. Yes, and and we must say like we're not experts by no means. We are just consumers that are using the product and have used it to the level that um, people consider us to be experts. We're experts in training. Where are you going with this? We're experts in training, I guess. No, I, I don't want I don't want you because we we're not the end all be all. We don't know everything. But we can only tell you what we know and what we've experienced and how we've used it. And yes, we are we are very much cutting edge because we're always thinking about how can we do this. And you know, another thing that we do is we test limitations. Like, okay, it did this, but can it do this? Oh, why does it do this? Exactly. And you know, we've actually a lot of the things. Um, I posted. I posted something on social recently. In 2011, 2010, <clears throat> I had an idea of having a conference, but I wanted to reduce the overhead costs. I went to a conference in the Bahamas and it was really good. It brought in a lot of people. We spent a lot of money and, you know, only the people in the room got a chance to experience that. And I was like, you know, it would be really good if we could broadcast it, like broadcast it live. So I searched for a solution and I found presentation. Um, I can't remember the presentation software and allowed us to act. It allowed people to ask questions. It allowed us to have have speakers broadcast to us, and it cost me eighty dollars. It cost me eighty dollars a month plus twenty dollars per participant. Right. Yeah, Google is free. <laughs> but the conference was really good. What we did is we had a day long conference, eight hours eight hours for the conference. We brought in five representatives as opposed to the previous conference that I had been to, where they brought in twenty representatives from California to New York 
to the Bahamas. They brought they brought people from California, New York, I'm sorry, California, New York, and Atlanta, and they took them to the Bahamas. Hotel and transport alone was enough to make a movie. Okay? <laughs> Hotel and transport alone was enough to make a movie. There was no way possible that they could have recouped that money. So my idea was, let's create a way that you can reduce your overhead costs and recoup your money and make your product pay for itself. So we did, we tested the theory and we did the same conference one day for, I think, 25, 20% of what they spent. The conference cost us 10 grand. And that was only because the software. <laughs> so if I did it in 20, if I did it in 2014, the project would have cost us five grand. Just off of all of the new. We had one person, one moderator per, per per topic. There were five topics. We brought in five people. One moderator per topic. And that was the, that was the person in the room, and they they were able to after the after the session was over, they were able to meet with all of the people. We created an intimate setting so the people that were there got the added value of actually sitting down and eating with those professionals. Whereas when you have a conference and you invite people that are in the same industry, what ha what tends to happen is a lot of those people decide to hang out with each other and forget about the audience that has come out to see them. So when they go to eat, they go and eat with their peers as opposed to eating with, the, eating with the people that came out to see them. So what we did was we created an environment where these people were accessible for eight hours to the audience. So the people that participated felt like that was the best, that was the best money that they had spent because not only did they get a chance to experience new technology that they have never seen before, but they also got an, a chance to be in an intimate setting and create and for, forge relationships with these people. And many of the people that many of the people that were at that particular event have now created relationships with those people and are constantly in contact with them and are even working on projects as a result because they took the opportunity to make that work for them. So, you know, you can figure out ways, again, test the limitations of the software and the products that are available to you because just because it, do, just because it doesn't do this or you haven't seen somebody do it doesn't mean it can't be done. So just take and that and into... And it changes every... Every, I would say every, three weeks, but... Uh, not even every three, three weeks, months. like every 15 days it, now, it, it pretty changes. much. There's always a minor update, and every three months there's always a major update. So as much as we're experts... Um, Today. Um, yeah, yeah. So, it, in it, half an I, hour we, we may not yeah, be. We don't do it We won't be in a few days. So yeah. certainly um, get familiar with it and using it um, and then staying on top of it, you know. But once you get used to it, yeah, it's kind of like... You'll notice what changed, like they were, hey, yeah, exactly. they changed this on me. You know what I'm saying? So, exactly. Um, lastly, if you are interested in, if you are interested in technology or information in regards to not only the Google platform, um, but first, let me say the Google platform. If you are interested in the Google platform, Google actually has a blog. Now, I can tell you. As much as I love Google products, the Google blog system is horrible. It is the worst. The interface is garbage. I shouldn't say that. Right. <laughs> um, the interface. <laughs> she loves Google, though. No, but, but no, it is. It's not. It's not. It's not user friendly at all. But they do have a blog. Um, they do have a Google Plus blog. And if you are, and what they've done is they've really started creating communities around certain topics. So if you're interested in a particular topic, like they have a Google, they have a Google Hangouts community for people that only talk about Google Hangouts. So just Google Google Hangouts. Um, go inside your Google Plus and put in Google Hangouts, and you'll see all of the communities that come up. Um, also, there are blogs dedicated specifically to Google products. In addition, Mashables and Engadget, such a wealth of knowledge. 
I mean, there's so much information. And they have, of course, they deal with technology, but they also have specific sections for social media. And if you go to a lot of the tech, a lot of the tech blogs now, they have dedicated, they have dedicated a tab specifically to social media because social media is such a, um, such a big part of our lives, especially as professionals. So I guess that's pretty much it. If you have any questions, please visit ambcc.org. That's ambcc.org. Or you can contact us right here on Google Plus at the AMBCC. Once again, my name is Africa La Hollywood. Do you have any closing thoughts? Uh, we uh, were informative, uh, entertaining maybe. I don't know. This is nerd business, but uh, <laughs> hope to tune in to the next one, which is... Well, every, every two weeks, I believe, every two weeks on a Wednesday at 2 p.m., you can check us out right here at the AMBCC. The AMBCC is now located at 200 P Street in Atlanta, Georgia at the Opportunity Hub. The Opportunity Hub is a co-working space that, is, that acts as an incubator for entrepreneurs and professionals looking to take their businesses to the next level. Visit us at 200 P Street in Atlanta, Georgia, Opportunity Hub, AMBCC. Thank you so much, everyone. Don't forget, make sure you follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, AMBCC, everywhere on the internet.